Well, it turns out that the hackers that stole information from 200,000 Citigroup customers did it with relative ease. The high-tech thieves used Citi's customer login site to get names, account numbers, and emails without a hitch. Still no word if customers had money or identity stolen due to the breach. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Chris Wilson is a Republican strategist in Dallas. Remy Spencer is an attorney. And Fox Business's Sandra Smith joins us from the newsroom. Remy, let's start with you. What do you make of this story? Well, let's keep in mind that not every breach means that customers are going to lose money or have things stolen from them. However, the, the relative ease, as you said, that they were able to break into this website and steal this information is what is at the most troubling, I think. If they want to break in, they probably will try and find a way. But this just seemed too darn easy. And Sandra, it took them forever to even announce this thing. Weeks and weeks and weeks went by. You know, and this really extends all those worries about how many places do we put all of our confidential information? I mean, I feel like sometimes just to, you know, log on to buy a pair of shoes online, you're giving them your life story. I mean, there's so much of our personal information that's just out there, Jerry. And this is just one example that shows how easy it is for people to get to it. And if you did get any money taken, I mean, it's one of those situations where you'll probably get it back, but it's going to eat up hours, possibly days of your time uh, to really fight back these things. I mean, they could be messy. Well, Chris, I guess there's no privacy, but boy, that sure doesn't make me feel any bet better about having information stolen. Well, the thing that concerns me is, is it seems as if the hackers are always one step in front of the people who are providing security. And at some point, you have yeah. to wonder if the companies are making a decision that it actually will cost them less to clean up the mess than it will to provide the security on the upfront. Uh, up front. And I think that's my greater concern here is, do they know that this vulnerability exists and are just choosing not to do anything about it? Wow, that's a frightening thought. Good point. All right, well, let's move on to General Motors. They're looking to take back the title at, from Toyota as world's largest automaker. GM finished only 28,000 vehicles behind Toyota in sales last year. But in the first quarter of this year, GM outsold Toyota by 400,000 vehicles. Part of Toyota's problem, of course, is the earthquake and tsunami disaster that hit Japan. Sandra? Hey, you know, they're basing this on sheer numbers, and unfortunately, sadly as it is, we do have to... Uh, look at it that way. I mean, they did sell more than Toyota. Unfortunately, it was due to uh, horrendous events that occurred, and we can't really know if GM would have beat Toyota even if those events didn't occur. So, you know, you got to go by the numbers because that's really the story. And unfortunately, this is just a, a bit of a sad comparison to make, uh, considering how many parts and cars weren't made because of those disasters. Well, and Remy, it might not be the whole story, I think is what Sandra's saying. Absolutely. I think Sandra's absolutely right. There may be a lot more going on at play behind the scenes, but I just hope that GM can take this as an incentive and sort of build upon the momentum that they may now be reaching uh, and achieving because of these latest numbers. Chris, Government Motors, number one again. <laughs> well, what do you make of it? We all want to cheer for the American company here, but I think this is a perfect example of what's wrong with the Obama administration, their policies. You have big companies with ties in Washington that are able to get government money at our expense, while the small companies and entrepreneurial spirit is stifled by these same policies, that were, and those are the ones that would really pull us out of the recession. Overall, for the American economy, this, isn't a good, this is not good news because it means that small companies that might have thrived had the market been able to take its own, go work its own nature through on GM are still being stifled by the Obama administration. Well, and we'll have to see what happens if this can continue this kind of record for GM, obviously. Well, it may not be the must-have item for Christmas, but it sure is funny. Oh, Herobuilders.com is releasing the Anthony Weiner doll. The doll is dressed in his underwear with a blue oh, sticker God. near his special parts saying, tweet this. There'll be two versions of the doll, one for adults, one for children. And Chris, I am not explaining the difference. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Well, we've come a long way from the anatomically neutral G.I. Joe I used to play with, but I'll say I have two sons, and if either one of them asks me for this, I'm going to be really concerned about how much time they're spending watching the news these days. Yeah, no kidding. Sandra, what do you say? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to leave all the internal thoughts alone here. First of all, I don't think that that doll looked much like Anthony Weiner to begin <laughs> with. I mean, put him in a soup for heck's sake. Um, but, you know, hey, this is probably going to be in a lot of, you know, stockings this Christmas. It's funny. I don't know. Maybe, maybe people will get a rise out of it. <laughs>
<laughs> or not. I couldn't help you it. Oh. Remy, well, save this, us. This is certainly not the Ken doll I grew up with. I think, you know, what's fascinating to me about this story is that men are so much more fascinated by it than women. I have male friends <laughs> who all have this picture on their computers. No, thank you. I'm not interested. So I'd like to see how many men are buying the doll as opposed to women. Well, so Maybe they don't feel well, threatened by Well, let me say for the record, him. I won't be one of them. <laughs> What'd you say, Sandra? Repeat Maybe that? they don't feel threatened by him after they saw that picture. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think Maybe it makes them feel better. Women are going to run the world because we're not, like, thinking about it. I mean, we're not off in la-la land. Over it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks, Chris, Remy, and Sandra. Great job. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.